Kitty was our reporter there. Committee members filed out of Headingley at 8.30 last night after seven hours of talks. We didn't know it then, but Geoffrey Boycott and Yorkshire were about to part company after 24 years. At a news conference a few minutes later, the men who hire and fire at Yorkshire gave their reasons for sacking their leading batsman. It was felt that the various situations arising, uh, which I'm not prepared to divulge, um, that in the interests of Yorkshire cricket in the future, that we felt that it, his connection as a player should be terminated. Every player was discussed individually and uh, every player's um, service to the club was decided individually and it was not unanimous, it was a majority. Club chairman Brian Walsh paid tribute to Boycott's achievements. He's been a colossus upon the stage of English cricket and his dedication to perfection and the striving for it, physical fitness, honing his talents and gathering runs has been a byword in cricket. Later over a drink at the bar, Brian Close was more forthright in his views. I think, look, everything must come to an end. Even things like that, even an era of a, a great player. Len had to finish at some time, I had to finish at some time, Johnny Ward had to finish at some time. Just because people do exceptionally well and develop their names and, and what have you, it doesn't mean that the club owes them a pension for life. Boycott himself left Headingley saying nothing. Are you happy with the outcome of the meeting? What was the, out the atmosphere like then? Then the man some have called the master waved goodbye and headed off to an uncertain future. Yorkshire's decision not to renew Boycott's contract has not surprisingly generated some sharply conflicting responses. TV personality Russell Harty had this to say. I'm appalled by the decision. Men of that stature, skill and enterprise should be allowed to play whatever's happening behind the scenes. But he said, I regret the decision, but it had to happen. It's the right decision. And Yorkshire actor Brian Glover described Boycott as the greatest batsman Yorkshire ever produced. And that was really saying something. But Gene Rook, columnist in the Daily Express, who often makes a virtue of Yorkshire characteristics, said, it's about time. He shared all the finest and all the worst traits in the Yorkshire breed, she said. He had a great desire to be a winner, but was totally egotistical and pig-headed. He was a great cricketer, but didn't really play the game. There's been mixed reaction, too, from members of the public. Is it a sad day for Yorkshire? Well, I don't think so, no. Well, he's getting on a bit right, but uh, can they replace him? Can't say anything else. Anybody else as good as him, so why throw away our best chance? As I say, he's had his uh, day, and uh, it should give way to uh, these youngsters, I reckon. Can't carry on forever, can you? A sad day for Yorkshire? Yes. Yes, it is, really. You think you should have kept him on? Oh, yes, in a way, yeah. Is that his spade in, something, and coming useful? Well, he's got to stop sometime. Like all of us, we've got to stop sometime. You should give him another year, at least. Not even you should make way for the younger lads, you know? No, no. Finest bat batsman in the world. Only one member of the Yorkshire Cricket Committee actually voted to give Boycott another contract, Tony Van. I believe he still has something to offer, but I'm in the minority and I accept that. What was his reaction? Have you spoken to him? I had uh, a meal with him last night afterwards with a few friends and he was remarkably buoyant. Uh, the man has great character. He has bounced back from adversity before in 78 when he lost the captaincy, in 83 when he was sacked and again last night he still had a smile on his face and that took guts and uh, he's a man that uh, I like to call a friend, and there's not many I can say that about. This, of course, is not the first time Boycott has been sacked by Yorkshire. Five years ago, his relationship with Ray Illingworth hit an all-time low. And after criticising Illingworth publicly, Boycott was suspended. Two years later, he was sacked, just as he was about to begin a testimonial year. There was a bitter row as his supporters rallied round to demand his reinstatement. In the end, the pro-boycott lobby won the day, and he was taken back by Yorkshire. But this time, the committee is confident there'll be no campaign to reverse their decision. 
Boycott's career with Yorkshire began in 1962 when he made his debut against Pakistan. In his first full season the following year, he notched up an impressive 1,446 runs and he was also voted the Young Cricketer of the Year. In 1977, he returned to Test cricket after an absence of three years. In the match against Australia, at Headingley, in front of his home crowd, he notched up his 100th century. Well, earlier this month, he returned to the Yorkshire side for their last match of the season. That was at Scarborough after a long absence through injury. It turned out to be Boycott's last match. So where does he go from here? Well, it's thought unlikely another English county would want to take Boycott on as a permanent playing member. He'll be 46 next month. In the past, it's been suggested he might go to South Africa if Yorkshire sacked him. He's no stranger to the country. He played in the so-called Rebel Tour in 1982. But there appears to be little prospect of him playing there in the immediate future. Earlier today, Guy Williams spoke to Dr Ali Backer of the South African Cricket Board. Jeffrey Boycott will always be welcome in South Africa. He's been to this country on many occasions in the 60s, in the 70s and in the 80s. Uh, he's made it known very clearly uh, to the public and to cricketing authorities around the world that he feels South Africa has been unjustly treated. And because of that, he does have a lot of friends in South Africa. But uh, Jeff has played club cricket in South Africa. Is it not likely, therefore, that because there is such a talented batsman on the market, that uh, a South African Curry Cup side or even a club side would be interested in signing him? No, you'll find that the clubs in South Africa today do not have the financial resources for one reason or another, and obviously the uh, poor rand value is a factor. They do not have the financial resources to, in 1986 to bring out from England or wherever it might be overseas uh, coaches or players to this country. South Africa then appears to be out of the question. So what will Boycott do? Well, with me is John Callaghan, the cricket correspondent of the Yorkshire Evening Post, who's written a book about Jeff Boycott. John, where does Jeff Boycott go from here? Well, he's going to take a fair amount of time to decide himself, I think. He's um, a very wealthy man. He's achieved nearly everything there is to achieve in cricket. It seems unlikely that he will play first-class cricket. Um, Glamorgan possibly would be the only county who you might associate with him. But he will be 46 and a half at the start of next cricket season. Uh, and he is also, of course, a member of the Yorkshire Committee. Now, He could uh, actually play for another county <laughs> and still be on the committee. He could indeed, but whether, <laughs> whether even he would feel he could uh, do that, I, I doubt. Um, but obviously, as Brian Close has said, everything comes to an end. Um, Jeff might feel he's a future in, in league cricket, for instance. But it's a very small stage for a very big man, isn't it? You did advocate in the Evening Post recently that he should be made the captain mm. of Yorkshire next season. Now, why did he do that, uh, and mm. did you think that was ever on? Uh, well, I didn't exactly advocate it. What I did report was the fact that moves were going to be made by people who felt that he had the expertise to help the young players. He is the last playing link with the great side of the 1960s, and he has the sort of experience that money can't buy. That was the basis on which the idea was put forward. It was an idea which Brian Close thought was a good one two years ago. I can understand now why Brian felt less enthusiastic about it. Um, the fact is now that Boycott's departure will inevitably put a greater strain on the cricket committee. People like Appleyard, Sharp, Stott and Close, who also played in the great days, will now have to fill that gap that Boycott's left by being at least available to young players who might want help and advice. Will he take the decision lying down this time, or do you think we'll have another Ferrari like we did three years ago? Well, that's out of his hands, I think. Um, before, three years ago, there was a ready-made army, all just waiting for a bit of direction. I think, to be honest, everybody's had enough of that. Uh, I, and I don't think that uh, people like Peter Briggs and Tony Van, who led it that time, have any stomach for that sort of fight again. And let's face it, at 46, boycott isn't going to attract the, the support of the man in the street. What difference do you think that his absence is going to make to the Yorkshire dressing room? Well, I don't think it'll make as much as people imagine. Uh, it's been my experience travelling regularly with the team for some 15 years now that the dressing room has not been as unhappy as people would suggest. Obviously, Boycott's been an isolated figure, Partly because he's found himself in a situation probably unique in Yorkshire cricket where one player has been so much greater than the others. In the past, the outstanding players like Hutton, 
and people like that were also, while they may have been